In this episode, school kids, scientific research, science fairs, and why they matter. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. It's the end of May. As the academic year wraps up, middle and high school students from across the state of Virginia gather at VCU in Richmond for the 2009 science competition held by the Virginia Junior Academy of Science. Back in September, they took on the challenge of designing and conducting research in a professional laboratory. Many of their projects were the result of special programs and classes dedicated to teaching scientific research such as the one taught by Ryan Templeton at the Mathematics and Science Specialty School at Clover Hill, just outside of Richmond. My class is called Scientific Research, and in this class, students are instructed to find a mentor, and they work with that mentor side by side, learning about the practice of science, but also specifically about what that mentor is studying. And so, in many ways, they are like a graduate student, and they're learning science by doing it. Um, to learn science without doing experimentation would be like taking band without really picking up an instrument. The end result of the mentored research project is a serious scientific paper that the students have been taking to numerous science fairs and competitions and now they are having a final run through ahead of the Virginia Junior Academy competition. Are you all ready for your presentation practices today? The transformation that you see in a student is incredible from the beginning of a project to the end. And most of the time they say the same things. They'll say that I am not a scientist. I really don't know much about anything related in science. And that's perfect because we really want them to grow and learn through doing the science, uh, doing a project. High school students are very capable of doing a lot of the work that you would normally see in an undergrad or a graduate student. I found it extremely intimidating at first. I'm a junior this year and there were some seniors in our class who did their presentations at the beginning of the school year and I thought, wow, I don't think I belong here. But once I got started, I realized that if you do enough research, read journals, um, get familiar with the terms of what you need to know and uh, just don't doubt yourself and jump right into it, it's, um, it's not easy, but it's a fun challenge. Well, I think for what, you know, what the class is trying to teach us, this is the best way to, to do it. You, know, you can't learn about the way science works you know, in the scientific community without kind of just jumping in and you know, going feet first. You can't, it, we couldn't sit in a classroom and Mr. Templeton be able to accurately reproduce this is the way things are. You know, a lecture style format wouldn't work for you know, the goal that we're trying to reach. Certain classes do have to go with a lecture, like history or sometimes a math class, but this one specifically, you have to do your own work and learn from what you've done. It's a little more trial and error than you would expect. I mean, there's a lot of, well, maybe this will work. Well, it actually didn't, so I guess i got to go back to step one and keep going and working from there. At the heart of this experience is the relationship with an outside mentor. The students get to see how professional science works. They get immersed in lab culture and the teamwork involved in everything from grant applications, experimental design and execution, through to final publication. My mentor actually, when I went to go find him, he didn't really treat me as a kid. He treated me as a student and as one of his students probably. And I was just really comfortable with approaching him and what I wanted to learn and he was very open to everything that I was interested in. The dynamic between student and mentor gives the teacher an opportunity to fill a non-traditional role. As a teacher I can grade their papers, I can grade their presentations, but at some point we want them to go outside of the classroom and present to a third party, possibly a competition or maybe just a symposium. And at that point I become their coach and I try to make them look as good as they can uh, to uh, communicate their ideas that they've worked so hard to research. In a competition setting such as the Virginia Junior Academy, Ryan students get to demonstrate just how far they've come in the course of a year. 
Their papers and presentations are judged by a panel of experts in each specialist category. I think that a competition environment is important and it has merit because it forces the student to adopt a different way of thinking. And we've often found that the effort that the student gives is greater when they know that they're going to be presenting to an outside uh, party other than the teacher. Andrew Shore's project looked at two genes implicated in the cardiovascular health of mice. Under the guidance of a mentor at VCU's Massey Cancer Center, he learned lab techniques that will give him a head start in the career he wants to pursue in the life sciences. Judge Caitlin Muse appreciates how valuable this early experience is. A lot of these students who have mentors and who do science fairs every year, they get a lot of really good scientific techniques such as, I mean, PCR and basic running of uh, agarose gels, um, which is actually something I had to learn in college. And obviously you have that in high school, you're going to have an advantage when you reach college. Across the hall, Jessica Harrington presents her work on a treatment for heart attack patients to judges in the medicine and health category. I hope to one day be a cardiologist. Heart disease has always been a very important part of my life. Uh, my father had a heart attack and my grandfather on my mother's side died of a heart attack. So I knew when I, when I signed up for this class that that was definitely where I wanted to you know, begin my study. After all the students have presented, the judging begins, and the kids and their teachers go off for some well-earned R&R. As volunteers, the judges give their time because they appreciate the value of this experience to education as a whole and to the individual student. I think it gives kids grades 7 through 12 an extraordinary opportunity to do research on their own, either in their classrooms under teacher guidance or in professional labs, and actually create their own experiments. But throughout the state, we have teachers that think it's important for kids to get a head start to begin as early as seventh grade, and some even before that, in doing research on their own where they find something that they're interested in. Although the students' presentations are important, it's the quality of the paper that carries most weight for the judges. What's okay with you all? I want to check this off as an average number one paper. Or, or is it an outstanding number one paper? I mean, think every year a few will stand out um, as being, well, maybe they're a contender for the top three to five spots. And this year in particular, we probably had six papers that we're all relatively close together. The top-ranked students receive awards of cash and college scholarships. Everyone gets kudos. I think the most important thing that's at stake is the recognition for their work. Very often it translates into summer jobs at NIH, for example, there are a number of programs, recommendations for college, just advantages. They have contacts where their peers that don't do science research don't have those contacts. Students who do a research project have a definite advantage over students who do not. Uh, not only do they develop the skill sets that uh, are needed to apply to a good college and to succeed in college, but uh, the researchers uh, that they work with can often give them a lot of advice about how to apply to a college. And as a matter of fact, I've spoken to one director of admissions for a medical school, and they are always looking for students who've had this sort of experience, uh, even as a high school student. Some of these students will take their projects beyond the state level to national and even international science competitions. For some, participation can even lead directly to jobs. Wherever their science projects lead to, recognition from peers and teachers is always a great boost. From Mathematics and Science High School, Clover Hill, Andrew M. Shore. I was, when I heard my name, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I was kind of surprised, yeah. A competition and a school year come to a close. For the students who will become professional scientists, their careers have already been kick-started in terms of college admissions, contacts in the scientific community, and future employment. Even those who don't spend their lives in science have the early advantage of doing independent research, and their sophisticated level of science literacy will benefit their lives whatever they end up doing.